This is it, the Live Well presented by Rapala. That is Ronnie Moore. I'm Tommy Sanders, and we are here with the Live Well for the last time in 2024. Oh, it's the final roundup, Ronnie. Golly. It goes by so very fast. But the good news is we are going to a place that has just been beyond believable in the past decade. We are going to the St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario. I mean, need I mention the history of just the last four years over there? It's just incredible. They get bigger and bigger, those smallmouth, all the time. They call this the promised land, Tommy. I wouldn't mind wandering for 40 years in the wilderness if yeah. I made it to uh, the St. Lawrence River in Lake Ontario. Um, but for these anglers, it all comes down to this, like you said, angler of the year race, rookie of the year race, classic cut line, requalification opportunities, and winning in. You could be out of the classic and still make That's it. That's right, last event of the year winning so you in. Put four days together, Tommy, and it could save your season. So a lot on the line at the St. Lawrence River, AKA the promised land this week. Coming out of Waddington, New York, not Clayton as it has yep. been the past couple of years, that changes your logistics problems a little bit, right? 100%, because if we were coming out of Waddington maybe in late or mid-July, it could, it could factor down in Waddington. It really could. We've seen guys like Seth Fighter really take advantage of it, Steve Kennedy as well. But with it being later in August, you got to make the run to the lake for a lot of these anglers. And it's not just because the lake is overwhelmingly better. It, it can be and is in, at oftentimes. There are great places to fish in the river, but when you think of your nearest competitors, it's like the fear of missing out. It's FOMO, Tommy. If your nearest competitors in those points races are going to the lake, you almost feel obligated. You have to go there too, because if they unlock something, you have 27, 28, or the record 28, 29 pound bags are available in the, in the lake, and you don't want to miss out on those and be way behind the eight ball. So if you are in the top 10 in AOI, if you're in the top three or four in Rookie of the Year, if you're right at the classic cut line, or if you're needing, you're in 80s in points and got to be in the top 70, I got to feel that at least 65% of the field is going to get within eyesight of the lake. And it's not without risk. This run to the oh lake gets much, much longer, takes you much longer to get there. You lose more of your day and there's no guarantees out there. No guarantees at all. Let's put it this way. A couple of our guys in the points race, the Justin Hamners, Trey McKinney's, Cody Huffs of the world, they are trying to fend off the likes of Chris Johnston, who started the Northern Swing in fourth place in the points race. So he was right there behind them. Because of Trey's flub up at Smith Lake and getting his weight nullified on day two, that brought 10 more people into the AOI race going into our Northern Swing. If you think about the Lake George run for Trey McKinney, let's, let's rewind it back to the fourth stop yeah. of the year, the St. John's. If Palatka to the bottom of Lake George was his longest run he had made in a tournament, that's about 50 minutes. He's going to have to make that and more yeah. if he's going to go to the lake to try to win. Just to get to the, the lake, he's got to run that far. You're yeah. going to fend off guys like Justin Hamner, who had a top 10 here last year and who obviously was working well with Patrick Walters. They were right there, not far from each other, out in the lake. So you got to you got to fight off that. You got to fight off the Johnston brothers who know. And I mean, let's put this in perspective. Chris Johnston has fished 20 days on the St. Lawrence River in elite competition since joining. He has been in the top 10 all 20 times. And I'll go even farther. He's been in the top 10, or he's been in the top three. 15 of those 20 days. So Chris Johnson's dominance can't underscore that at all, and he is definitely going to be a factor. He claims it's harder now because, <laughs> because he used to be able to catch him shallow. Now everybody goes out and catches him deep and does better. He can't, he's, he's got that whole yeah, he dimension really, yeah. taken away from him. There. You really got to manage your history well with the Johnson brothers, and they've done it flawlessly. I'll throw in Cody Huff as well. Cody Huff last year at Champlain did really well. He's going to be confident coming into the Northern Swing. And he almost made a top 10 at St. Lawrence last year, but lost a few hours each day to mechanical problems. That may, we don't want to have our races decided no, by that. No, no. But with 110 miles of river before you get to the lake, that could be a factor for some of these anglers. You can't play it safe in the Elite Series, Tommy, or you're going to be safely in 65th on your way home. All right, you say nobody's going to be using the river, doing those drifts and everything, but you get out to the lake, and that's the river's a drift thing, the lake is a target thing, and yes. what if the weather is not perfect enough, not perfect enough, but even sufficient enough for you to be able to effectively fish a target? That's going to be another big thing to watch is the weather. There are guys like Cooper Gallant, who are seasoned big water fishermen, said last year, if I can have two hours in the lake, 
versus eight hours in the river, I will go do two hours in the lake. That could burn you, Tommy, because you could go catch 20 pounds even, and some people would be like, that's a good day, not a good day on the St. Lawrence River. You could still see places like Ogdensburg, those mid-river drifts, you know? We've mm -hmm. seen Bernie Schultz do very well in some of those bays, catching smallmouth not far from the lake, right. but in the river. You've seen Ogdensburg factor. There will be someone possibly doing well in Waddington in that shallow region, maybe Messina, but those places, I don't know if you can beat the lake for three days and make it to the top right, 10. Right, you gotta like, make it to the top. If Unless chaos happens, yeah. you've got to be able to survive somehow. And who knows, some of these bays, somebody might wander in there and catch a five pound largemouth and help out their day uh, tremendously. But the St. Lawrence River, it's been different every time we've been there because the takeoff locations changed. Some years Canada's been off limits, some year the lake's been off limits. Everything's now, on. Everything's in play and we're all the way out of Waddington. The weigh-in should be great, and what a crowd to weigh into to win Angler of the Year, oh, win yeah. Rookie of the Year, and solidify Classic. It's a great culmination of the season in Waddington. Tremendous crowds. There's one final tease, one final attraction. Let's talk about the way this, this body of water, the lake and, and the river, have progressed. 2022, for the first time ever, we had two anglers crack the 100. That, that would be Jay Shakurit and Corey Johnston. Yep. Cracked the 100 last year, the very next year, the top four, led by Patrick Walters, cracked the 100-pound mark for smallmouth. Set the record of all for all time. It's kind of getting old, and, yeah. but yet we shouldn't like we still have less than 10 instances of something that is still historic. We could have had another one, Tommy, last year. Kyle Welcher lost half his day after locking up Angler of the Year. He lost half his day and ends up half a pound short of winning or of breaking 100 pounds. We wanted to give him an honorary Century Club, but he's ready to go and get it again this well, year. Well, he was compensated pretty oh, well for no, his no doubt about it. At no that doubt tournament. about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that. Uh, <sighs> People say less because they're gonna have less time. There, I saw some predictions from some anglers as few as you one. You would think it has have to be less. Yeah, with less time to fish, I would expect less. I still wouldn't put it past three, maybe four to do it. We just know so much more about it. Um, and the fact that if they don't get it done and they come back early just to be safe, you can still catch a five pounder that helps you substantially in the river, not far from takeoff. So I'm gonna still think at least three and I wouldn't be surprised if it was five. Well, it's going to be fun to watch either way. <laughs> That's about. an absolute guarantee. The Humminbird Bassmaster Elite on the St. Lawrence River. That is Waddington, New York, August 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th. And that is the live well for today.